You're watching BCTV. We're all about Brantford. You're watching BCTV, Brantford Government Television, a service of Brantford Community Television. This program is brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. This program was... Okay, welcome. We'll call the Board of Selectmen's meeting for April 5th, 2023 to order. Item 1, to consider and if appropriate, approve the Board of Selectmen minutes of March 1st, 2023. So moved. Second. Moved, second at all. Uh, any edits, corrections? No, hearing that all in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Um, can I get a motion to add under item 18, appointment of Anthony White to Brantford Housing Authority? I'll make the motion. Second. Move, second, and all in favor, say aye. 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 Um, item two, getting a motion to go into uh, executive session to discuss pending tax appeals. We'll invite in Attorney Perito. Motion. Second. Move, second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. aye.
Okay, we'll call the motion back. And uh, can I get a motion to go back in regular session? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, for the record, no votes were taken while in executive session, and there's no action to take at this time. Moving to item three to consider and, if appropriate, approve a request from Brian Devlin, Superintendent, Wastewater Pollution Control Facility, to waive the bid for the purchase and installation of a home of 34 horsepower non clogged sewage pump at the Hosley Avenue pump station and award the contract to Mechanical Solutions. Incorporated at a total cost of $18,794. Brian? Yes, good evening. The uh, particular pump station, the pump that uh, uh, seized on us, it was 16 years old, and we're staying with a non clog HOMA pump. Uh, it's going to take about six months to get, so I only have one pump there, uh, and we had to rebuild the guy rail. So I went out to uh, a few uh, pump companies and this one matched and was the lowest price and homeless we have a bunch of pump stations that have home pumps but 16 years is a really long time for a pump and the one next to it is similar in age so in a few more months I'll get that repaired too so that's why I'm asking for a bid waiver okay I have a question sure just generally speaking how how Warm uh, before they kind of uh, ah, the home not use, using uh, uh, between 12 and 14 okay. years okay. is usually the life on them. Okay, good on the pump. Thank you. Right, any other questions? No. All right, get a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Approved. Second. All in favor say aye. Right. Aye. aye. Item four to consider and if appropriate approve a request from Brian Devlin, Superintendent, Wastewater Pl Pollution Control Facility, to waive. The bid for the roof replacement on the solids process building located at 75 Block Island Road and award the contract to New England Roof and, and Home Repair at a cost of $44,875. Three quotes were received and this was the lowest price. Uh, yes, on the three quotes, they also had a better warranty on labor and material for this. Uh, the roof's about 40 years old and it leaks and it's not far from our switchgear room. And that's what supplies the whole facility. We had a storm a few weeks ago, and uh, it just started coming in the building. So it's definitely due for, uh, we brought the companies out to review what has to be done, and that was the better price with warranty and everything. Well, what's the reason for the bid waiver? We didn't advertise, is that what happened? Uh, I went out and uh, we had three or four companies, right. three got back to us. This was the better price in the warranty on it. They gave us 20 years of warranty and labor. Yeah, so to uh, Selectman Dunbar's question, we're actually waiving the advertising. Yeah, right? he did solicit. Right. Yes, yeah. right. Yep. There's such a discrepancy between uh, the bids. I mean, there's thousands of dollars. Yeah, the, um, one is almost double. Yeah, then there was and only the one sheet work? of paper. Yeah, it was like, no, not even. It had one sheet of paper. Mm. Here's the price, and uh, I didn't, uh, wasn't was comfortable price. with him on that yeah. one. So, a motion to approve. Second. All right, move second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. Item five, to That's consider fine. and if appropriate, approve a request from Margaret Liberta, Director of Human Resources, to waive the bid and extend the current contract with ADP for Human Resources Information System for an additional five years at the rates proposed effective July 1, 2023, and for uh, as stated in the package. This did go to the Board of Finance, which reviewed and gave a favorable review for this contract. All right. Yes, uh, we'd like to extend our contract with ADP. And most people think of it as a payroll system, but we also use it as our, our human resource information system, taking all personal data in one system, including time and attendance. Um, all of the uh, direct deposit comes through through the phone. Everything is pretty much automated. When we're expanding the automation uh, in the next year to hopefully include uh, what we call insurance connectors, connecting directly to our insurance companies, so automated processing. We think this is a viable uh, contract. We, want, we like our service and we'd like the investment in for the next seven years where we've got the best rate quoted for that um, and like your commitment hopefully to allow us to do that. Okay, great. Any questions on this? Motion to approve. Second. Move second. And any further discussion? Hearing on all in favor say aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Sure. Item six, to consider and if appropriate, approve an amendment to the lease between the town of Brantford and the Brantford Early Learning Center for a 20-year lease extension. Uh, and this item will be referred to the RTM for legislative action. So uh, we have an amendment in a package. 
Um, I think this this is required. Uh, they are applying for a grant, I believe. Is that true? Yeah, so yeah. any grants that they apply for for any improvements or funding, um, yeah. they, they need to have a long-term lease agreement. That right, so that's what's driving this uh, request. So Motion to approve. Second. Move second and any for a discussion. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, item seven, to hear a presentation concerning the proposed changes in the curbside collection program. And we have Paul Muniz, Chairman of Solid Waste Commission, Tyler Bound, the Solid Waste and uh, uh, Sustainability and Compliance Manager. Anyway. Um, and then you also have a, a few uh, uh, contracts to recommend. Do you want to just give an overview and then we'll... Yes, I'd be happy through. to. Yeah. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you. The uh, Solid Waste Management Commission has been working on a project to address the end of our existing contracts for curbside collection and material recycling. We went out to bid um, uh, to gain engineering services to give us advice on how to modify the program into this current decade. Um, and it has led us to recommend several changes, which we then subsequently went out to bid for to obtain the services to replace the contract services that are ending. What that uh, leads to for our residents is a conversion to automated pickup of trash and recycling at every non-condominium private residence that currently receives the service. Um, and a uh, change from our existing multiple recycling material contracts to a comprehensive material recycling contract, um, which would uh, process the recyclable materials produced by our residents in a um, industry referred to method called single stream recycling, which could also be thought of as no sort recycling correct um, you know it represents a major change for the town it's a continuation of the recycling program that Brantford is a leader in the state on um, but it does require uh, replacement of the contracts for which we've made some recommendations for award um, the requests for which have been presented to the board of select okay so we'll go through Item A, uh, to consider and for appropriate approval recommendation from the Solid Waste Management Commission to award the contract for curbside garbage and recycling collection and award a three-year contract with the possibility of two one-year extensions to BRS Services LLC at the bid prices. Which is provided. So we obtained bids for uh, three for a three-year contract for curbside collection from a number of bidders in an open RFP process. Um, we did extensive uh, review of the bids, including interviews and written communication with the bidders or responders to the RFP. Um, based on that evaluation, um, we have um, made the recommendation to purchase curbside collection of trash and recycling services as a distinct service to the town, uh, which is a modification from the text included in the RFP, but which was allowed by the RFP process to the extent that bidders could offer uh, their best proposed option to us. On that basis, BRS Services um, offered us the lowest price for the initial three-year period. And if we look at the full five-year term that we're interested in, um, the average price, average annual price for the five-year term is also offered by BRS Services. Okay, and this is for the collection of uh, at the curb, brought to delivered to our transfer station, and then bringing the recyclings to the MRF, to the 
the recyclable material to the uh, uh, process. MRF, yeah, process to the processing process. facility by yeah. BRS. Service. Yes, yes, right, yeah. right. All right. Any questions or areas? No, a lot, a lot of a lot of the people didn't even bid on everything. Um, so this is a replacement of a bid package that uh, we've had for five years. Um, five years ago, we got one bid. Um, we went out to achieve, to gain engineering advice um, so that we could come up with a request for proposals that potentially would have more bidders. Um, I think we had five companies come to the pre-bid meeting. We received three bids um, that were most responsive to the RFP. I'll move it. Second. Move, second. And this will go into effect July 1 yes. this year. All right. It's been moved, second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Our second recommendation uh, is for... Yeah, I'll just read it for the record, okay. if you don't mind. <laughs> uh, all right, item nine, to consider and if appropriate, approve a recommendation from the Solid Waste Management Commission to waive the bid for the processing of recyclable materials and award a five-year contract to Murphy Road Recycling LLC at the initial cost of $95 per ton for the first year with a 4% increase uh, each following year, applicable monthly single stream average commodity rate based on the table provided. So uh, our next recommendation is to award a contract for recyclable materials processing, <coughs> excuse me, to Murphy Road Recycling to replace, I believe it's uh, four current contracts that are expiring. As you know, Brantford residents um, traditionally have segregated recyclable materials in their blue 13 gallon bins, blue or green 13 gallon bins. Um, this modification in approach would allow all recyclable materials to go in one wheeled container, which we'll talk about next. Um, by going to a single, a single stream of recyclable materials, um, it will allow the town to take advantage of uh, a, a, what was a bigger material recycling vendor pool. <laughs> Goes from one to two. Um, the conversion to a single stream contract um, also allows the town to reestablish or to establish new contract terms that um, will give us an opportunity to better control the recyclable material, material costs by having clearly established material processing fees and clearly established potential uh, rebates for resale of recycled commodities. In addition, the effect of entrained trash within the recyclables um, is better stated in this revised approach. Um, and the threshold for impact to processing price uh, that the, count, the town currently experiences, which kicks in at 5% entrainment, will be raised to 15% and effectively 16% before we see a surcharge for um, entrained solid waste within our recyclable materials. The engineering advice that we got recommended to us that we emphasize better contract terms in our recyclable material approach. We've done that. Um, and uh, it promoted the use of a contract that has the potential to allow us a rebate. Uh, the Solid Waste Management Commission was skeptical that the market would yield a rebate. The RFP sought to uh, gain a single annual processing rate and we were not successful in that approach and so we've um, instead gone back and as allowed in the RFP terms 
uh, researched and achieved uh, a contract with a recycler that um, will um, give us our best value. Okay. And your commission uh, negotiated this 4% from 2 to 5. You think that's a, a reasonable uh, assumption that this is what's going to continue to go up? Um, that is the, that's the offer that is made to us. Yeah, I uh, know. Is it the, is it, do you think it's well, like? Well, yeah, I think CPI was 9%. Okay, so. that's what, that's <laughs> what I the, wanted to get yeah. on the record. Thank yeah. you. Any other questions? No. So, you know, you're talking about single family homes or two family homes, not condomini condominiums Correct. at all. Correct. And in the future, you, do you see that's going to be impacted also the condominium uh, garbage well, co collection, just in general? I think the Solid Waste Management Commission has a lot on its plate. Right yes, now. it does. We have a lot on our plate. And there are a number of initiatives that we need to take action mm. on. Um, there is, we have considered um, modification of some of the rules that apply to condominium use of the transfer station and our disposal contracts. We need to work on that. Um, I think what's more uh, likely and to have a better effect on the town budget in the short term would be to look at um, uh, the possibility of including a food waste recycling option for the residents if we can learn enough about it and if we can manage the costs. Thank you. Um, we'll probably spend time on that and then yeah, there is work that needs to be done to modernize our um, consideration of how condominium trash and recyclables are handled. It's a fair question. Thank you. Okay. Motion to approve? Second. Move second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, item 10, to consider if appropriate approval recommendation to award the contract for the purchase of trash and recycling carts to Ray Rig Pacific Company in the amount of $1,019,750. Now, to be clear, Ray Rig Pacific Company is a vendor through Sourcewell, which is a purchasing consortium that the town does participate in. So there is there isn't a need for us to, to bid this, although we did receive pricing. The source well uh, is uh, uh, d going directly to RARIG. We, we're getting a better uh, price per cart. Um, so uh, just for transparency purposes, wanted the commission to be able to present this or if there's any questions specific, but we'll be direct purchasing these through the manufacturer. If there's anything you want to add. Um, yeah, so mm -hmm. the, the transition to um, no sort recycling and automated trash and recycling collection requires the town and the residents to have special carts. Um, and the uniformity of carts uh, will facilitate ease of collection. Um, we've made a recommendation uh, to purchase one cart for trash and one cart for recycling for each residence. Um, uh, the RFP in December did allow direct bidding for cart supply, um, as well as an option for the curbside collection bidders to provide the carts as part of their bid. Um, we believe, we know, we have a better price uh, for the town by purchasing directly from the vendors, from the manufacturer. Um, we uh, looked at two manufacturers' prices. Um, Ray Rig Pacific had a lower price, um, and they are in source well, so we're able to purchase from them directly. Um, the vendor Included in the price uh, includes the service of delivering both carts to each address, so the residents won't have to go and pick them up. Okay. And uh, just for the uh, community, can expect these to be delivered June after 15th. June, after yeah, June. starting June 15th, and they'll do any 
maybe 300 bins or houses, I forget directly, a day. So it'll be a certain number of houses will get their bins each day up until July 1st. And then, so, and then when you do receive them, do not use these bins until July 1st. Until right? July 1st. Say that right? Carts, carts. The carts? Yeah, yeah the carts. carts. And we're working yeah. on publicity and notification. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Be, a, look, be on the lookout for a mailer coming yeah. to your yeah. home soon. Yes. Okay. Um, I'll move it. All right. Second. Move, second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. We've got one more. Uh, to consider and, if appropriate, approve a recommendation from the Solid Waste Management Commission to award a three-year contract with the po possibility of two one-year extensions for the hauling of MSW uh, to Cherry Hill Construction per uh, attached proposal sheet, effective July 1, 2023. Um, the, the, the language is a little tricky. We're going to award the, we, we want, would like to award the contract after RFP to Cherry Hill Construction, who is our current MSW hauler. The hauling is not to Cherry Hill. The hauling is to the Covanta Trash to Energy right, plant. Yeah, yeah. Somebody asked me about that today. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they are our current service provider. Their price went up, as you would expect, based on the costs of uh, fuel and labor since the previous bid five years ago. Actually, six years ago. Um, it was a competitive bid. We received two bids. Uh, Cherry Hill is the low bid. All right. <coughs> Motion to approve. Second. Move, second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Item 12 to consider an appropriate approval recommendation from the Solid Waste Management Commission to waive the bid and extend the Thimble Island collection contract between the Town of Brantford and Thimble Island Ferry Company LLC for an additional year at the current rate of $14,675. Effective July 1, 2023. So this is for the collection of the Thimble Island uh, solid waste and recycling. This is currently done by the Thimble Island Ferry Company. They sent us, um, basically they will be doing this process for the same price that they did last year for a one year extension. And then we can uh, go back into this process for the coming years after that. Okay. I believe in the past, no one else wanted to do it. Or we didn't have good we luck. We had a couple of bids. We had a couple yeah, of bids in prior we, years. Yeah. People aged out of it. Yeah. You know, went to college. Um, Thimble Island took this contract over, over. from a previous yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. contractor, and um, and they, they provided great service. We had really no complaints. Yeah, we extended it last yeah, year. Yeah, right? and we yeah, ended right. up extending yep. it last yep. year. Recall based on that. So yep. we recommend it. Yeah. All right. Move it. Move second. second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you guys for the work. Thanks. I know it's uh, been a lot. It's been a lot. <laughs> been a lot. <laughs> you're, you're, you're getting there. You're almost at the finish line. <laughs> yeah. Now just distribute yeah. 19,000 cards. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's the easy all. part. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You can read all this, right? Yeah, I will waive it. Yeah. To consider for appropriate or following uh, resolution, this is for the 2023. Oh, I'm sorry, we got that. Yeah, 13. All right, to consider for appropriate approval request from Alex Paluzzi, Director of Parks and Recreation, to waive the bid in the purchase of 14 AED units for the placement at various athletic fields and public spaces and award the contract to Cardio Partners in the amount of $21,446.88. Do you want, do you want to do the resolution first? No. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, with me is um, RTM First District Representative Judy Barron, who also is representing uh, youth sports uh, this afternoon. Uh, she's been involved with uh, girls softball for many years, as twelve yeah, over a decade, and also with uh, youth cheerleading. So she's very involved. Um, Board of Rec took under consideration a request um, of the possibility of providing installing 14 AED units at various public spaces, uh, parks, fields, and athletic fields in response to the unfortunate cardiac event of Buffalo Bills safety, Damar Hamlin, and in conjunction with the heightened awareness of cardiac emergencies, <clears throat> the safety of youth athletics, and our community members as a whole. Uh, we had a presentation from A.J. Pace along with Mike Papali and Deb, Deb Vitale of DeFibTech. And just to let you know, Mike, Mike Papali is coach of um, Fairfield Prep 
a high school basketball team, and she, when he was a young playground at a young playground uh, leader at Wallingford High School, actually had a uh, his heart stopped, and uh, they did not have an AED on site, but they did have a, a nurse, and the firehouse is right down the road, and they were able to uh, bring him back to life. And knock on wood, he's uh, still moving ahead. And he said, if it wasn't for that, the quick response. Um, he would have been in real trouble if the nurse wasn't there and the AED, they weren't able, the firehouse wasn't that close. Uh, one other thing is uh, Defib Tech is actually, they're a manufacturer of AEDs. They're out of uh, Guilford and Brantford, and they did conduct a presentation. Um, I'm not sure if everyone knows, but Brantford is a heart safe community. And after discussions with Brantford Safety Committee, Fire Chief Tom Mahoney, and myself, it was recommended to move forward. Board of Recreation felt that it was a proactive thing to do and felt that uh, we weren't just talking, we were specifically talking about youth sports uh, because uh, it wasn't, uh, there's a lot of different age groups that go to all these youth sports as well. And that really it's for the whole community because anyone at any time could have uh, an issue with their heart. And in sports, you say, where does that happen? Well. We know in, in young sports, a uh, baseball, you would think the, the pressure of a baseball coming at you where your heart possibly could stop. Uh, so uh, those are some of the issues that have, everyone saw what happened on national TV with the professional athlete. They had everything there and the AED was the key component that they were able to uh, get that heart going. And uh, as the fire chief said to me, the more opportunities that we have AEDs wherever we can have them anywhere makes a real big difference. So um, our board decided that it would be a good thing to take out of our, uh, be proactive, take out of our recreation uh, uh, special funds that this would be a good investment. And um, they did, uh, they had a couple of meetings pass it unanimously uh, with the, you know, with it, the consideration that we would receive a bid waiver uh, from the board of selectmen today. Uh, and I just wanna let you know that the fire department does possess an automated compression device on loan from Defib Tech. Brantford Youth Football carries an AED at the WS Field Trailer, and uh, Brantford High School stores an AED in the main gymnasium, all provided by uh, Defib Tech. They have uh, given them to us uh, over the years uh, to utilize, uh, but we're trying to put them at four, 14 different areas throughout town, parks, field, fields, athletic facilities to give uh, to move forward with that. Um, and Judy, you might want to say a couple words. Sure. Thank you to the Board of Selectmen for the consideration of this waiver. Um, just a little background on AEDs um, for informational purposes. Uh, the state law requires AEDs in 2012 for certain establishments to have AED units uh, in medical settings, certain emergency vehicles, uh, public golf courses, and higher educational institutions that have funding available. While that is wonderful to be able to have in your community, um, many of our parks do not hold these AED units. And um, as Alex had stated, um, in the case of Damar Hamlin, and being able to have that at a youth recreation sport, well, not youth, but at a recreation sport, and only having three minutes to be able to bring this individual back, we feel like this could be a key component for our community to hold. Um, there are a lot of emergency vehicles at some of the high school as well as football events but um, there is a large amount of youth recreation sports that do not have those emergency vehicles on site. So having these units available for the community, not only in youth recreation, but at the parks where individuals are playing pickleball or just walking or just enjoying you know, time at the park with their families, these units will be a key component if a circumstance were to happen. And um, I commend Brantford and Parks and Recreation um, in getting ahead of this um, and not waiting for a circumstance like that to happen in our community and to be prepared and proactive. Thank you. Uh, Cardio Partners is actually on the uh, is on the on the state contract. Uh, Defib Tech actually is the uh, manufacturer of it. So we're, it's actually this is going to Cardio Partners. They're just a manufacturer of the AED. Um, uh, talking to Chief uh, Mahoney, he had mentioned to me that they're, they're they have one on loan right now, and that um, they use Stryker and Null, which they're all underneath Cardio Partners. Is partners with them that they would definitely look uh, to go out there. They, they cost anywhere uh, pretty much from $1,000 to $1,400. They've kept the price 
Uh, their regular price was like nine ninety five. We got them for eight hundred sixty two dollars for the actual AED. Uh, so we just thought it was a, a good opportunity. They were local. Chief said that he would probably be you know looking to go with them again you know down the road with uh, some of the uh, equipment they get. Uh, usually, in, I guess fire service and emergency service, they go with Striker, which is like the Cadillac of uh, of all. Uh, but in the ambulance, and, you know, so but they are using some of uh, the Vib Techs right now. They have, they're using the automatic compression device right now. See how that works. How are you going to set up uh, accessibility to these? So, uh, great question, uh, Selectman Sorry. Dunbar. Uh, one thing I, w I was concerned about, and Judy knows that, like, oh, you know, with vandalism and what happens, but I talked to some of my colleagues in Cheshire, Southington, a few of the, the surrounding towns that have used them over the last year they started to do, they, they were trying to move towards that. Uh, knock on wood, they haven't had any issues. I was down um, at the ESPN Sports Zone down in February, down in, uh, at a dance competition for my daughter, and um, I noticed going around that facility that they were everywhere. Um, you know, on, on site, which makes sense. They had them at each ball field, so, and I'm gonna say overkill, but it's just the, the quicker you get there, the better you can. And they were in a red case, and that's actually what these would be in a red case. They would be unlocked, uh, they're, they're alarmed. Um, and again, that was one of our concerns, but <clears throat> not going, there's not much you can really do with them, um, pretty much, but we know how. So, uh, some places I think we do have some, you know, we do have some camera ring in some of the issue, in some of the parks, not all of them right now, but, um, we just feel confident it was it was worth a try, and also we would bring them in in the winter months. At, you can keep them out probably through October. We probably put them out this time of the year, going forward, and then we would we would service them. They're going to do the uh, first year service on them. It's it's in inside the pricing here, and uh, I think we'll get a lot of support from them. They're they're local, which is makes it a lot easier. And I also did talk to the uh, board of education. Uh, I can't remember Pam's last name. She's just been here six months. She's from North Brantford, but she came here. Uh, and she said that when she was in Guilford, uh, she was able to uh, service uh, those. So she's got a lot of, uh, she was uh, she had used uh, uh, their AEDs and was really uh, familiar with that. So uh, I think we have some good partners around to, to assist us. And I, I, think it's, I think it's a proactive thing to do. I, I think it'll be great for just not just the youth sports, but also the public at a whole that, if we have that opportunity, because the chief says the quicker and the more we can have, it would be great to have them everywhere. But the, I know, you know, pricing is tough, but obviously, you know, if we can save as many lives as we can, then we should try to do that. If, if I could, if I could just add, for safety purposes, um, when you utilize um, the AEDs, they will not provide a shock unless it instructs you to do so. So if for whatever reason they're being vandalized or somebody is utilizing these and you know, not for the purpose it's intended to, nobody can be harmed by these because it will not allow you to administer a shock unless it's needed at that point in time. Yeah, great point, that's what I'm saying. So basically it's not gonna, if you know, people are in different situations, they would be you know, nervous. We had an incident at the, at the Parks and Rec Department and knock on wood that day we had a, uh, Sharon Kenny, actually Sharon Clarman Kenny, who actually be there, and we had someone that went down, and we did not need the AED, but it was right there. So if we had an issue, uh, and that gentleman did pretty well, he had it was during one of our last basketball games during the tournament. So we do have those type of situations that happen, and but we feel more comfortable because it's it's right there, and these units are really they're as simple as possibly can be. So it's basically anyone can basically do that if you just follow. A basic, yeah. Tell you, we'll so, tell you where they get placed. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah, the training so. will be provided as well for all of the firehouse training. Yeah. Right. I'll move it. Second. Move second. Any further discussion? Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you your support. support. Yes. Thanks. Item 14 to consider for appropriate approval the following resolution. This is a resolution adopting the 2023 Scrog Hazard Mitigation plan update which is required every five years um, i'll just read it quick whereas the town of brantford has historically experienced damage from natural hazards and it, it continued to be vulnerable to the effects of those hazards profiled in the plan i.e flooding drought ice jams hurricanes severe winter storms thunderstorms tornadoes and wildfires resulting in loss of property and life and threats to the public health and safety and whereas the town of brantford has developed and received conditional approval from the federal emergency management agency for its hazard mitigation plan update entitled 2023 Scrog 
hazard mitigation plan update under the requirements of 44 CFR 201.6 and whereas the public and committee meetings were held throughout the planning process regarding the development and review of the plan and whereas the plan specifically addresses hazard mitigation strategies and plan maintenance procedures for the town of Brantford and whereas the plan recommends several hazard mitigation actions projects that will provide mitigation for specific natural hazards that impact the town of Brantford with the effect of reducing vulnerabilities and protecting people and property from loss associated with those hazards and whereas the adoption of this plan will make the town of Brantford eligible for funding to reduce the long-term risks and future hazards now therefore be it resolved by the town of Brantford Board of Selectmen the one the plan is hereby adopted as an official plan of the town of Brantford to the respective officials identified in the mitigation strategy of the plan are hereby directed to pursue implementation of the recommended actions assigned to them three future revisions of the plan maintenance are required by 44 CFR 201.6 and FEMA are hereby adopted as part of the resolution for a period of five years from the date of this resolution and in accordance with the authority vested in town of Brantford the board Town of Brantford Board of Selectmen, they hereby adopt the 2023 Scrog Hazard Mitigation Plan update. Um, our town engineer, uh, John Hefferly, sent an email. He was has reviewed this and uh, is um, feels that the plan is uh, is ready for our approval. I don't know if there's any further discussion, this will get sent to FEMA for their for their review and acceptance. So moved. Second. Move second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All right, Item 15, to consider if appropriate approval request from Stony Creek Museum for an exemption as permitted by section 115-4 of the Code of the Town of Brantford regarding the consumption of alcoholic beverage in a public area and allow the serving of beer and wine at its 2023 annual meeting, holiday event, and two fundraising and or membership events. So moved. Second. Move second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Item 16, to consider if appropriate approval request from Tags on Main located at uh, 1227 Main Street for the temporary placement of two benches uh, and merchandise on the sidewalk in the front and the side of the building. Um, there is a, uh, a letter as well as a, uh, um, a plan where these will benches will be located um, the town assistant town engineer did uh, go and re review doesn't believe that this will impede any uh, um, walkway or accessibility uh, ADA requirements can still be maintained um, however we are going to be recon possibly reconstructing that intersection uh, as part of the main street project so um, you know if at any time the uh, town uh, needs to make some uh, adjustments or removal of these. We will make the remo uh, changes to this approval. Yes, Did you if, if I could, um, the assistant engineer also wrote um, a memo that she is requesting that the board of selectmen approve it with the one year approval. He, well, that's, yeah. yeah. And, um, and, and with the stipulation that the layout may need to be changed or right. rescinded. Yep. So. As we were saying, so that's we, why it says it's temporary. Yeah, yeah. so it'll be a, a one-year approval, and and uh, and may need to be changed. I will just also add. I will, um, you know, we just want to make sure. And I see Greg is here. That that um, the bench, if you're facing the building to the right, um, I know you still have the distance between the required distance. Uh, you know, I just want to confirm and. Uh, that it isn't impeding because the travel path of that ramp is actually a skewed because because of that light pole there. Yeah, right. So yeah, so we just want to make sure that we're maintaining that width. So if if for some reason the bench impedes, I know it was measured off, but I just want to confirm have the engineer uh, that we're we're allow you know it still has the correct width uh, due to the, the the travel area. All right. Um, and if, and uh, on the side, it'll be added the sidewalk area too. It's really up against the building. So moved. Second. All right, move second. Any further discussion? All right, hearing all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, 
Item 16, to consider an if appropriate approval request from, oh, I'm sorry, area 17, uh, green use, to consider an if appropriate approval request from Mag Health and Lauren Farrell for the use of the town green on April 22nd, 2023, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. to hold the tag sale to support the BHS class of 2024. Move it. Second. Move a second, and all in favor say aye. 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 Item passes. Item uh, to consider if appropriate approval request from Marianne Lovig for the use of the town green on May 4, 2023, 6 p.m. to hold a prayer for a National Day of Prayer. So moved. Second. Move the second. All in favor say aye. 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 To consider if appropriate approval request from downtown Brantford Downtown Merchants and Perry Mareska Economic and Business Development Manager for the use of the town green on May 6, 2023. 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. to hold the book festival. Move it. Second. Move a second. All in favor say aye. 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 To consider if appropriate approval request from the New Haven Ballet for the use of the town green on June 9, 2023 at 6 p.m. to hold the ballet performance. So moved. Second. Moves a second. All in favor say aye. 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 To consider if appropriate re approval request from the Cub Scouts PAC 424 for the use of the town green on June 23rd, 2023, from 5 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. to hold crossover ceremony and celebration. So moved. Second. Moved second. All in favor say aye. 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 To consider if appropriate approval request from Brantford High School for the use of the town green on June 14, 2023, at 6 p.m. to hold the 2023 high school's graduation ceremony. I move it. Second. Second. Uh, discussion, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, to consider if appropriate approval request from the Love Tribe Center for the use of the town green July 22nd, 2023, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. to hold a concert for Henry. So moved. Second. Let's move second. All in favor say aye. 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 To consider if appropriate approval request from Trinity Episcopal Church for the use of the town green on September 15th and 16th, 2023, from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. to hold the Trinity Church Fair. Move it. Second. Move to the second. And all in favor say aye. 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 Item 18, appointments. Board of Police Commissioners, Christine Sociola to fill a vacancy left by Jill Marcus, term to expire January 30th, 2025, and Robert Nash to fill a vacancy left by Richard Goodwin, term to expire January 30th, 2026. I'll move it. Second. Move second. Uh, any discussion? I'll just add that I thank uh, Jill Marcus and Rick Goodwin for their many years of service on the commission. Um, and uh, look forward to the new members uh, uh, joining the commission this month. So all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, Hasway Central Municipal Planning Committee, Tyler Bound. So moved. Second. Move second. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, Anthony White to consider uh, to fill a vacancy left by Ryan Sullivan, term to expire April 30th, 2020. I'll move it. Second. Uh, move and say, all in favor say aye. 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 Reappointments uh, Board of Police Commissioners John Sasoulis, term to expire January 30th, 2025, and Valerie Will Wilkins, while Wilkins, term to expire January 30th, 2026. I'll move it. Second. Move second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Letter of correspondence, a letter from Jerry Shaw, that was dated March 21st, 2023. Dear Mr. Cosgrove and the Board of Selectmen, as you are aware, the RTM recently revised the town code that governs the duties of the tree ward and the revision. It was in response to a September 6, 2022 accident when my wife experienced a near fatal encounter with a falling tree while driving south on Leeds Island Road. It has been revealed that the town has not had a state certified tree warden for almost three years as required by, uh, by state statutes and previous and revised re versions of the town code after September 6, uh, our repeated attempts to contact either the town public works director or the tree warden uh, one of the same failed. The revised code now requires the town tree warden respond to a taxpayer tree related request as of September 6th and as of the writing of the town tree warden page does not list the name or email address 
or the state certified tree warden or anyone acting in that capacity. It's for these reasons I am appealing directly to the board. It should be noted that the freedom of information request revealed the outrageous fact that the town public works administration has no record of post accident cleanup on September 6, 2022 even given the severity of the near fatal event involving a road rice, road, roadside tree. We wonder if other similar events had not been recorded by the Brantford Public Works. We have hope that the new tree warden will keep publicly accessible records. Finally, we are concerned that the group of roadside trees that contain the tree that fell on our car continue to present danger on Leeds Island Road to Leeds Island Road drivers. We believe they are rooted in private downward sloping soil next to the town right away. According to the police report, these trees are across the Leeds Island Road from Eversource Utility Pole 44736, which is damaged by the same tree that struck my wife's car. According to Section 16-10A and C of the Revised Town Code, the tree warden has the town and state authority to remove private roadside trees that present threat to public safety. Given the town does not have a state certified tree warden, we suggest the deployment of on call arbors to evaluate public safety uh, before prevalent recent wind storms weakens these trees further. Uh, just for the correction, I know this is a narrative that continues to be pushed, but we do have a certified tree warden. If you go to the uh, state website, who, by the way, is the, uh, as under statute, is the keeper of the records that uh, for those who are certified, uh, Mr. Zelensky is uh, uh, stated as receiving a certification. So uh, that is um, just a false statement. So I just want to correct the record on that. Okay, and we will review the rest of the later. Any other business? All right, motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to adjourn. All in favor, say aye. 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 Have a good night. This program was brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Watch town meetings and other videos on demand at BrantfordTV.org.